Ready? Good evening. The May 17th Board of Education meeting is now in session. Please rise for the invocation. O oh God, we pray to administer that which is just in all educational policies, being ever mindful of your guidance, stir us to action with love, wisdom, and understanding. The pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 2.03 is approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Second. All those in favor? Motion passes 7-0. Uh, item 2.04 is establish agenda order and the agenda will stand as published. Uh, I do have, a, have an announcement I just want to make before we continue. Beginning uh, or immediately after the end of this meeting, the board has to conduct a private hearing involving students, so we're going to have to ask everyone to leave the boardroom as soon as we've concluded our meeting. And I'll remind you at the end. And I also want to welcome Councilman Walker, who's here tonight in our audience. Thank you for coming. Item 2.05 is recognitions. Sally Eaton. Good evening, Mrs. Korbelak, Board of Education members, and Dr. Arlotto. I am Sally Egan, Assistant Superintendent for Student Support Services, and I'm pleased to be joined this evening by Karen Siska, Director of Health and Support for the Anne Arundel County Department of Health. As you may be aware, Governor Larry Hogan proclaimed last Thursday, <clears throat> May 11th, a school nurse day in Maryland. Since this is our first meeting since that day, it's only fitting that we take time to acknowledge and thank school nurses and health assistants for their valuable contributions to the children attending Anne Arundel County Public Schools. As you know, we, along with students and parents, have grown to trust and rely upon the expertise that school health staff bring every single day. Nurses and health assistants do far more than just dispense bandages or, band or attend to scrapes. They are critical lifelines for many children who could not attend school without the services they provide. Tonight, I would like to thank the Anne Arundel County Department of Health for their continued partnership with our school system. They are a collaborative, skilled, and passionate partner who shares our values when it comes to caring for children. I also want to take a few minutes to recognize three members of the health department team who are shining examples of the incredible commitment and compassion that school nurses and nurse assistants possess. Sue Comley has been the school nurse at Southern High School for 22 years. First and foremost, Sue is a health educator. She is animated and dynamic in her classroom presentations and use every face-to-face -face interaction as a teaching moment. Sue is a tenacious advocate and liaison at school, civic, church, and social events who never ceases to assist South County families. She has played an integral part in the lives of multiple generations of students, giving them insight and medical strategies for self-management of their health conditions. Nancy Pruitt, also known as Nurse Nancy, is an unsung hero as a health assistant at Pasadena Elementary School. With 40 years of experience as a surgical, neuro, and cardiac nurse, she brings a wealth of knowledge and sense of security to the building as she proactively monitors students and staff. She is especially adept at assisting with medically fragile students and her unique bedside manner that enables her to remain absolutely calm even during intense medical emergencies. Nurse Nancy is not just a nurse. She is phenomenal at her job, elevating what could be deemed ordinary care to some truly extraordinary care at Pasadena Elementary. And just last week, Nancy assisted a community member in distress outside of the school until emergency responders arrived. Health assistant Rosemary Holton 
is the Triple Crown of Point Pleasant Elementary School. She is responsible, accountable, and very thoughtful about her work. Having served at the school for 19 years, she is a familiar and friendly face. From the moment students encounter Rosemary, they know they are in good hands. Rosemary not only understands and executes her day-to-day -day duties, but understands the scope of school health and the overall goals of the school system. She takes the time to get answers or find solutions for parents and thinks ahead to prevent any issues. She also monitors and watches trends with students to help keep them in class, available, and prepared for learning. As Sue, Nancy, and Rosemary come forward, please join me in thanking them and their colleagues for everything they do for our schools and our children. Ladies. Item 2.06 is school and community highlights, and I'd like to start by sharing a bright moment that came from something that began in darkness. As everyone knows, last Thursday, someone hung a noose from a light fixture at Crofton Middle School. If the suspects intended to stir hatred and angst, they failed. In fact, it was just the opposite. Under the leadership of Principal Nuria Williams and her team, the school staff and students rallied together in unity. In a loud voice, they said, not here, then the incredible community jumped in. Spurred by the group Crofton is Kind, more than 250 people gave up part of their Mother's Day to write a colorful message of love and support on the sidewalk at the school. It was and is a powerful message to our students and our entire, our entire county that acts like this have no place here. So thank you to everyone who supported our students, not just last week, but every week. Mrs. Nally? Um, Maria Sasso and I are members of the uh, Maryland Hall Board and Linnell Bowen who is current president is retiring after 21 years I believe and uh, Linnell is the face of Maryland Hall she has meant so much it's such a wonderful asset to our school system uh, with with all that they do for our performing and visual arts program and and everything they do for the community and uh, we are embarking on act two which is a second phase of renovation at Maryland Hall and um, on June 9th there will be a big celebration uh, for Linnell Bowen and I really encourage and hope all many people will come out there will be many tributes there will be a, a surprise announcement uh, all kinds of things going on for the tickets are fifty dollars for the cheap seats and hundred and twenty five dollars for the uh, other seats so whatever you can afford come out and celebrate Linnell and what she's done for our community you can get those tickets by going online at Maryland Hall and did you want to add anything yeah the only thing that I would add is 
And I'm going to have Dr. Arlotto explain it. Why are we talking about Marilyn Hall and how is Marilyn Hall connected to what we do in the school system? Because we own the building and... Okay. <laughs> um, and I'm going to wing it. Yeah, uh, wing it. I'm not Come really on, sure. But we, we do indeed own Marilyn Hall. It is part of um, uh, our, um, our inventory of buildings. Um, it's something that we've leased to Marilyn Hall and their guild for a number of years. And it really has been a center point, as it is for the county, in the arts. Um, but it be, has become the catalyst for the arts for us here in the school system. Um, uh, it is, that's where we built our first PBA program at Bates, and it continues to be a catalyst um, not only for the community but for our arts program here in the, in the, in the public schools. We're very, 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 very proud um, that we continue to partner with them each and every day. Our students are there uh, almost seven days a week. We've got students in and out of that building. We're very lucky to have that access to it and very lucky to have the partnership with, uh, with uh, um, the board at uh, Maryland Hall. Thank you. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, that's what Excellent. I was looking okay. for. Okay. <laughs> Mrs. Hummer. Um, uh, this is the time of year where there's lots of end of the year performances going on, and I had the pleasure of seeing the Corcoran Middle School end of the year orchestra strings concert, the Glen Burnie High School orchestra strings concert, and then a special performance um, at Mead High School um, of their steel drum band. And Mr. Tasso and I um, were able to see that, and it was fabulous. And um, the Corcoran Middle School Band, if that's an indication of all of our middle school bands, our music department is burst, busting out all over because there were so many kids on the stage and that was great to see as the pipeline that's going up to our high schools. Um, I also last week had here at the at central office they had a display of all of our um, charter and contract schools were there with students um, showing off what we're doing there and it was a great example to see the kids talking about their their schools that are part of our inventory of school choice programs um, all of us were able to attend the cat north um, award ceremony last week which was always inspiring as you see what all these kids are doing as they go out and that was a great evening and one more, Ms. Burge and I were able to go this morning to our volunteer um, appreciation tea. And um, I believe the numbers were that we have um, over, Monique, tell me if I'm wrong, 18,000 volunteers and over 570,000 hours that were given by volunteers throughout the system this year. And I believe that's undercounting because I know a lot of us don't necessarily turn in our hours and we should. Um, to have that so that's the equivalent of over 15 million dollars that in service that's given to our schools to have that so thank you to all of our volunteers out there and for the amazing things they do mrs. Birch okay I got it um, <laughs> Um, Mrs. Hummer mentioned um, the two things that I wanted to mention, but I want to um, put in an extra plug for, for Cat North and for the things that those students um, were accomplishing there. Um, many of the students, some of them were just juniors that were being honored at this, and they already have certificates to go out and get jobs. Um, some of them were seniors who are able to go out and get jobs. Others were seniors who were going on to four-year colleges with scholarships, with scholarships larger than any scholarship that I could get. Um, it was really quite impressive, um, many going on to four-year schools, many going on to culinary schools. Um, I just, I want to remind people that Cat North is an amazing place, and if you don't know about it, please check it out. It is a place that could fit any student. Um, there are programs from uh, graphic design to um, environmental, um, I forget the name of the program, but if you want to learn how to be a park ranger, that kind of thing, you could get your start there. I mean, there are an amazing number of things that you could learn at Cat North, and these kids who work so hard were doing amazing things and getting $10,000 scholarships, and I was so impressed, and I'm always impressed when I go there, and I really think if you haven't been there, you need to go visit. Thanks. Yeah, I want to echo that too. I thought I was most impressed by the student who is going to Purdue to major in motorsports engineering, who had been working on cars at Cat North, and and the girl who's on her way to the Culinary Institute of America, right out of Cat North. So it's just fantastic program. 
Um, our next item is 2.07, the CROSC report. Good evening, President Korbelak, Dr. Alato, and members of the board. My name is Scott Howarth, class of 2017. That's it. Yesterday, CRASC elected a new officer team. Our new Secretary of Education, Connor Curran, had planned on to introduce them, but since traffic is backed up, you get me instead. <laughs> it's funny because yesterday I was wishing for more time with CRASC. Just one more moment, and now I get it, and I'm going to use it. The first time I came to CRASC, I was in sixth grade. I was so impressed by the older students, I wanted to be the guy at the podium, who everyone respected. I wanted to be a, build a better tomorrow through student leadership. I wanted to hang out with the older kids and go on field trips. I was a force of nature, all 4'10 and 75 pounds, wearing a clip-on tie. I knew that I could make a difference in the world, and I absolutely fell in love with student leadership. I wish that I could go back to the moment and do everything again, not because I would do anything differently, maybe would not wear a clip-on tie, but I would give anything to relive my experience in student leadership. CRASC has taken us all on a crusade of advocacy for con environmental conservation, student representation on policy-making bodies, equity in education, transgender rights, and teacher compensation. Somewhere along the line, we've became leaders. Our voice carries the message of 80,000 students. With the encouragement and trust of our peers, I can stand in solidarity with my generation. Personally, I have lived on that empowerment for so long that I'm afraid of what my life will be as I move forward. My personal challenge will be to live with the same fearless conviction and selfless motivation once I'm speaking as an individual. What many of you might not know is that Krask is our sanctuary. We have come to love how we can set aside our personal stresses and obstacles to focus on the larger picture. Together, we have built a protective family, bonded in trust, loyalty, mutual respect, and a shared vision where it's about the people where all means all. Like all graduating seniors, I am eager to move out of my house, step outside of my comfort zone, and take on more adult responsibilities. But I've also been struggling with the gut-wrenching fear of leaving behind my organization. Now that it's finally over, I can see back along the journey, and I think I might finally understand it. Somewhere behind the people, have become, the, somewhere behind the people we have become and the endless hours of work, the public speeches and the media pressure, behind the elections, the hearings, the board reports, blogs, interviews, lobbying appointments, committees, the wins and the losses, there's a goofy little kid in a clip-on tie who knows he can make a difference in the world. Can you remember what it was like to stand in those shoes, to feel the rush at the podium, and to embrace your leadership potential for the first time? That kid fell in love with ex the experience and never once looked back. I serve and lead for him because the truth is that you can make a difference. Your voice is heard, and it is even possible to build a better tomorrow. Please remember, the great thing about being young is that you are still highly committed to integrity. Young people are not concerned about giving in to the fear and hate or offending the senses of the uninformed. There is a real freedom and empowerment that comes with being able to take a stand in the name of what is right. Thank you all so much for giving me the opportunity to represent the students of Anne Arundel County, and thank you for providing me this valuable outlet for student leaders in this community. Dr. Arlotto. I guess I just need to thank you for being Dr. Arlotto. <laughs> after working with you and after you came to that CRASC meeting a couple weeks ago, we can all agree that you must have been an amazing teacher. Carolyn, there's nothing left to say. We truly understand the meaning of family. Thank you to my parents who are here tonight in the back. This could not have been done without their dedication to me and my goals. I honestly think getting my license was one of the best moments for them. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, thank you to the person that has been a mentor and a role model for me for the past seven years. I would not be standing at this podium if it were not for you, Ms. Poison, and I cannot thank you enough for everything that you have done for me and this organization for the past seven years. Last week, she asked me if I would be her friend after all this is over. I, have, I had a simple answer, no. <laughs> we are family. It's been an honor and a privilege. Thank you for allowing me to represent the students of Anne Arundel County. Thank you.
Congratulations on your graduation, Scott, and the Terrapins are going to be very lucky to have you. Uh, Ms. Williams. So I'm going to say this, and I promise I'm going to say this without crying, because I cried enough yesterday. Um, <laughs> something that I don't know if you all know, but it's something that goes around through the students, is that back when Scott and I were in middle school, we actually ran against each other for middle school coordinator. And I lost. <laughs> and at the moment, it sucked, because I wanted to win. I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't really think about what I wanted to do with the position and what I could do. So looking back over it, the years, I wasn't ready for it, but Scott was. And I just want to say I'm so proud of you. I'm proud to see you grow and you are going to be even more successful after you leave here, but the students, the teachers, the faculty, everybody here in Anne Arundel County who has been touched by you is so honored to have you. So thank you. Dr. Arlotto. Scott, let me also add, um, uh, you write beautifully, you speak eloquently. Um, uh, we are all impressed each time you join us at the podium. Um, the difference is, is that leadership is not in a title. Leadership is in the attitude. Leadership is in the actions. Leadership is getting others to follow. You have a very dedicated team back there um, that has continued to follow because you have led, and you've led with integrity. Um, know that as you venture on uh, to College Park and beyond that we are a better school system. Our students are better served because of your work and the work of your team. Thank you. We will now move on to the public comment portion of the meeting. Anyone wishing to speak on an item that is not on today's agenda may offer testimony during this public comment portion. Speakers will be allotted three minutes each, and the board asks that comments remain civil and appropriate for the various audiences that may be watching or viewing the meeting. Student-specific and personnel matters are confidential and cannot be discussed in this forum. This time is intended for speakers to voice their opinion and not necessarily as a question and answer period. Speakers may pose questions, but answers will be counted toward the three minute allotment. For the record, please give your name before speaking and handout should be given to the board assistant. We have five cards, Robert Silkworth, Aaron Snell, Jack Oaks, India Oaks, and Danielle Brooks. Wow, what a tough act to follow. I mean, please don't stop my time yet. Scott, wonderful. Carolyn, absolutely marvelous. That's why we do what we do. Okay, my time starts now. Good evening, President Corblack, Vice President Hummer, distinguished board members. Dr. Alada, my name is Robert Silkworth, and I'm here this evening representing the High School Concerns Committee. Although we have not yet met in May because our meeting was postponed, uh, I do know some of the items that we will discuss. First, May testing. Uh, kudos to the professionals, Ms. Bradford and her counterparts at other high schools who worked their magic to schedule the test. However, please know that many students are stressed to the max. Some students are actually experiencing health issues as a result when combined with the loss of classroom time because of field trips and other interruptions, many believe that far too much class uh, time is really lost. And we believe that it is worth a look to see what we might be able to do in order to help minimize the stress and maximize time in class. I know that you will be voting this evening on the teacher's contract, and I read with great interest, Dr. Alada, your comments in recent letters to the editor. Dr. Alato, when you say that we need to work together based upon the hand that we have been dealt in order to be able to provide the best possible educational experience for our young people, we totally agree. We all know, however, that class sizes may become an issue next year based upon current funding. We might suggest that you take a look at some staffing strategies to help minimize the negative impact of the larger student population without additional teaching staff, at least during the next school year. We will share some comments with Dr. McMahon and the ASI Tech Advi Advisory Group uh, this week. I told this Board of Ed last month that we would be here to advocate or there to advocate for the budget 
uh, and we were. I would like to uh, publicly thank each and every one of you for what you have done for me during my career. At the budget hearing uh, recently, I did thank Mr. Shu, the County Council, the Boards of Education, and Superintendents, both past and present, because for my career, I have experienced 8% COLAs, or three years of 6%, as well as 3 to 5%, with only a few years of 0 to 1%. And with these COLAs, I also did receive uh, every step that I earned based upon my years in service. 20 years ago, I hit the top step. I really have not been negatively impacted by, uh, by a loss of steps. Many of our teachers, as you know, have. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I usually end with uh, my message is positive. We thank you once again. Uh, we'd like to end with a, a, a comment of hope, hope that you will continue to advocate for all of us as you did in this budget this year. Kudos, uh, Ms. Sasso, I understand that you were recently elected as Northeast Region Director of the National School Boards. Congratulations. And finally, we'd like to invite everyone uh, Friday evening at North County High School, a night of music. One of the best music programs at North County High School that I've seen in my 45 year career. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Erin Snell, and I'm the parent of a first grader at Hillsmere Elementary School, as well as two younger children. I realize we're going to have kids for, um, at Hillsmere for over 10 years, so it's, um, I'm excited to be involved. I'm, I'm currently the chair of our Equity and Diversity Committee on our PTA, as well as an incoming vice president of membership. I also have been in education for over 10 years and am currently teaching a GED class at Woodside Garden Apartments. Part of the reason I'm bringing up my teaching at Woodside Garden Apartments is I'm seeing firsthand the struggles of students who were not given the opportunities they needed to be successful in school and seeing the realities of how difficult that is. So students wearing the same outfit every single time I see them and students who have not been able to get their driver's license and students who need someone to pay for a haircut. And I want us to do something to fix that so our students that are currently in Hillsmere and struggling are, have more opportunities in their lives. Um, so the reason I'm wanting to talk to you about that is I'm asking that you consider retaining all of our 22 teachers as opposed to taking away three of our teachers due to the changes in student numbers, potential student numbers because of Monarch Academy. Um, tonight I wanted to speak specifically on behalf of our students who are struggling academically as well as our students who come from stressed home environments due to poverty. Um, we know that we have at least 25% of our students who are not reading on grade level and we have um, a quarter of our, I'm sorry, yeah, 25% and over 35% of our students are on free reduced lunches, leading one to believe that there's some family stress going on, parents working multiple jobs. Um, and we want, we don't get the extra support that Title I provides because we are not a Title I school. And what we want is we want stability for our students. Our students deserve to have the same teachers and, the, and a small class size to give them what they need. We do not need increased class size, especially for our struggling students. They should not be subjected to the market. <laughs> and right now, we, it says we have 100 students going to Monarch, but parents are constantly changing their mind. I have anecdotally heard of many who are like, I put my name in, but I might change my mind. We want stability for our kids and our families and our teachers, and we want to keep our best teachers. And when we keep, we're going to lose you, we're going to take you, we're going to lose you, we start to lose our best people. So again, we're asking at least until we get more concrete data, which is not going to come until the school has started next year, we want to keep our staffing at the same level um, for all of our students. So I again wanted to end and just say thank you for all that you do as a new I'm new to um, being on this side of education. I've been, being a parent is new and I know that this takes a lot of work and time. So thank you for all that you do for us. Good evening, President Korblak and Ms. Sasso and members of the board. My name is Danielle Brooks. Um, I have two 
children now at Hillsmere Elementary, and I do want to talk about retaining our teachers. As you know, being um, you know teaching at the community college and paying for college tuition and upcoming college tuition, the only way you can confirm that you're going to go to school is by putting a dollar down. There's no way to confirm students are going to Monarch Academy without that there's nothing forcing them to go. They've, there's an indication of interest right now in Monarch. There's about 100 students, from what we understand, that are interested in Monarch Academy. They've taken the steps to do the application, visited the schools, and so on. But, and I sent you an email earlier this afternoon. I want to thank Mr. Gilliland for getting back to me. But uh, I'll just piggyback on those comments in that there's no way to know by August that they'll actually attend. If you know anything about Hillsmere Elementary and Hillsmere as a community, you know that we have a very active PTA. We have an, a vibrant fundraiser every year that's well, well attended, not only by Hillsmere students, but by Hillsmere alum and other students in the community who do go to private school or other schools. We also have dedicated music and arts teachers. So when we talk about losing the three classroom teachers, our extracurricular teachers are also, from what I understand, possibly in, in in flux at this point too but again a lot of this is basically just assumption because we don't know who's going to monarch there's just no way to know until september when everyone shows up and sits down because there's no way to confirm that seat so deciding to take those three teachers at this point seems premature to me I'm getting ready to pay for college tuition. I know what classes my daughter will be taking in the next month. I have already committed my $400 deposit. She's going. I have no choice. I'm, if she goes to a different school, that'll be, you know, but she's going. There's no way for me to commit any other child to going to any other school, public school in this county, just because they've shown up and indicated interest. And I'm staying for a lot of the reasons I already gave you and the role of um, Hillsmere in our community and how great the teachers are. I have to point out too that over the past 10 years that I've been at Hillsmere, off and on, that we've had just in the past two years, 25% turnover in our teachers. A lot of them have left the county. Uh, my child is getting ready to go to college. A lot of the teachers, if she walked in the building, she wouldn't recognize most of them. It's not unusual, maybe over 10 years, but not over two. We also are about to have our fifth principal that I can name in the 10 years that I've been affiliated with Hillsmere. It would be nice for my children to be able to come back in the fall and know the teachers that they've already developed the relationship with that they're going to see in the fall because they know them. Thank you. Good evening. I am India Oaks and I'm here representing Hillsmere Elementary School as both a parent and president of the Hillsmere PTA. Last Tuesday we were informed that, because of potentially losing 100 students to the new Monarch Academy, we are scheduled to lose three teachers in the coming school year. What we do not know is how many students Hillsmere will actually be losing since many families who apply to Monarch have not made final decisions on whether to transfer to Monarch or not. We also have no idea how many students will actually be leaving from each grade level. What we do know is, we currently have 22 remarkable teachers that already are stretched thin with class sizes with an overall student-teacher ratio of 23 to 1, and some classes having 26 or more kids. We also know for certain that not all of the projected 100 families definitely will be leaving, and even if 70 of those 100 transfer, the removal of three teachers keeps the ratio close to 23 to 1. As I discussed in my letter sent earlier today, we also know that Hillsmere had the highest numbers of kids in Annapolis that were bullied, an issue that especially needs strong trust with teachers to help prevent, trust that can only happen if the kids have enough time to connect with their teachers. Hillsmere has been a constant standard for elementary schools in the county, with the great support system of teachers, staff, and community members taking care of our diverse student population, 
one-third of which are on reduced lunches. Without the constant and extraordinary support of our current teachers, our kids would not be testing high on park exams. We would not have the regular neighborhood events in places like Robin Wood, or have our wonderful Hillsmere Publishing Company that let our kids' imagination soar, while feeling like they are accomplished writers. Without knowing exact numbers of who will be transferring to Monarch, it simply is unreasonable and unrealistic to remove teachers from our school before knowing the actual impact Monarch will have on the Annapolis cluster, and so I ask that you wait on the decision to shift teachers for this coming year. Thank you. My name is Jack, um, and I'm a first grade at his elementary school, and uh, I hear that we're going to lose three teachers um, at his school, and that makes me sad. Um, if we lose three teachers, uh, um, some of the students at his elementary school might get really sad because we love our teachers at our school. If we keep them, all of our happiness will keep inside of us. Um, we should keep the teachers because they're, they're not just teachers, they're great superheroes that help us learn a lot of stuff, projects, learning, everything. So. All the kids in his elementary school need the same teachers to make them happy and learn even more each time of year. So I say we should always um, keep teachers no matter what because if we lose any, all the kids will be o only sad and they will lose their hope. So I really say we should keep them because if we lose them, um, <laughs> we will just be so sad, still and still. So we should. So if we be happy and keep the teachers, we can be not this happy, not this very happy, but super happy. But if we lose the free teachers, we can just be sad, very sad, or super sad. So we should um, keep them. We should. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you all for coming out to advocate for your school. I don't have any other cards. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to address the board at this time? Okay. We'll move on to consent items. Items 4.01 through 4.10 are our consent items tonight. Do I have a motion to bundle those and move them from information to action? Okay. All those in favor? We now have an action item. Dr. Orlato, your recommendation. Yes, ma'am. I recommend the Board of Education approve contracts as listed on tonight's agenda for as and item numbers 4.01 through 4.10. Mrs. Summer. Um, I just I have a question on 4.03. Just we're having some roofs replaced. How often do we replace the roofs at schools? So it's dependent upon the type of roof. Uh, for the record, Alex Shackney, the Chief Operating Officer. Um, all of our roofs are required by the state of Maryland to, at a minimum, uh, be 20-year specified roofs. Uh, here in Anne Arundel County, we specify a higher grade roof. We uh, typically are aiming for the 25 to 30-year range, uh, simply because uh, we're not able to as aggressively uh, replace those as some other jurisdictions possibly can. So we put a lot of preventive maintenance into them to sort of stretch the lifespan of them, and we put a more durable type of roof down uh, day one to sort of enhance that durability and longevity of the product. So probably on average, I mean, that's about the normal for a house roof too to have. I'm just, it's just curious. Thank you. All those in favor? Motion passes 7-0. Item 5.01 is administrative personnel appointments. Dr. Orlato, your recommendation. Yes, ma'am. I recommend that the personnel listed on the attached sheet be promoted and or appointed. 
All those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. Item 5.02 is the ratification of the negotiated agreement between the Board of Education and the Teachers Association of Anne Arundel County. Dr. Aletto, your recommendation. Yes, ma'am. I recommend approval of the tentative agreement between the Board of Education and the Teachers Association of Anne Arundel County. We have a presentation. Yes, good evening, Ms. Korbelak, Ms. Hummer, Dr. Alato, and the members of the board. My name is Melissa Rawls, and I am the Director of Employee Relations. The negotiating teams for the Board of Education and the Teachers Association of Anne Arundel County, or otherwise known as TAC, have reached, an, have reached a tentative agreement for fiscal year 2018, subject to your approval this evening. In brief, the summary of changes as agreed upon by both parties include, but are not limited to the following. One full step increase to all eligible Unit 1 employees. Um, the individuals at the top of the scale will receive a 1% COLA, and a second full step will be provided to eligible employees who were employed in Unit 1 during the 2008-2009 school year and who remain employed in Unit 1 into the 2017-18 school year. There will also be an expansion of selected student service resource staff who will be utilized for observations of student service personnel within Unit 1. Um, there will be modifications to the health care plan design for all Unit 1 employees. This year, the teams negotiated exceptionally challenging issues, particularly related to health care. However, both parties worked diligently to reach an agreement that serves the best interest of the board, TAC members, and supports their commitment to Anne Arundel County Public Schools students, staff, and community. On May 3, 2017, TAC ratified this agreement. As such, I respectfully request your approval and ratification of the noted summary of changes tonight. Thank you. Mrs. Sasso. I would like to make a mention about some of our citizens in this county that have called because they wanted literally to see the agreement. And basically, we as the board cannot present to the public an agreement when basically it hasn't been ratified by the board. So there was an agreement under terms that were discussed throughout the year with the board, different terms which went back and forth to the union, and tonight whatever the union has accepted, we have seen it and we ratify it and it will be on the website tomorrow. Correct. Do you want to say something, Richard? Yes, I, I would. Good evening, <laughs> President Corvillac, Vice President Hummer, Dr. Alato, and board members. For the record, I'm Richard Benford, President of the Teachers Association of Anne Arundel County. I want to thank Dr. Alato and the board and Ms. Rawls for their efforts to collaborate during this bargaining season. The past nine years has been difficult, and stretching the dollars that are allotted in Anne Arundel County is always a challenge. Um, at the same time, educators have made many sacrifices in order to keep things going, and that's been recognized. Educators across this county have maintained a high standard of delivery of instruction as well throughout all of this turbulent time with the notion that the economy is improving and enhancements will be made. We spent only six months. <laughs> only six months. <laughs> we spent only six months. I'm so thrilled. Working through the bargaining process this past year, We've had a sex successful ratification on May 3rd. Now moving forward, there's still much work to do and to ensure we continue our path moving forward, making employees uh, pay whole and keeping our health care fund solvent, we w or look forward to collaborating further. Now having the contractually agreed upon step increment does help, and uh, it, but it hasn't caught up those who stay behind and remain loyal in the system. So Anne Arundel County educators, as I mentioned before, have lost five and a half years of experience, steps on the scale. Our educators have been feeling the workload rise each year. Not having proper enhancements makes their efforts uh, seem less respected. So we must end the cycle of the Anne Arundel County Public Schools being the training ground for educators to seek employment elsewhere. And we need to respect the work of those who have remained. 
So in the past, the bargaining teams worked tirelessly to restructure a scale to make it more affordable for the county. We were instrumental in a plan redesign for moving to the triple option plan for health care. We made many concessions on our health care costs. Uh, we know we have a great health care plan. Uh, we have more uh, we have more than done our part and done our share to bring that stability back to the budget and the health care fund. And we must pass this budget to begin restoring employees' compensation to match their experience. Now, there are many activists who have been organized to take back our county. TAC has engaged these folks uh, on a grassroots level through our Raise Anne Arundel campaign, where we would look to raise student achievement, raise Anne Arundel, raise student achievement, raise awareness in the community of the need for more resources for our educators and to raise a level of understanding of how desirable uh, how a desirable school system is a win for the county as a whole so i'm confident that we can reach further agreements in the future based on the mutual collaboration on topics that we both have interest with the help of the county executive, the county council, the school system, and the bargaining units, we have taken steps to ensure that we are climbing out of the hole of health care and not slipping back into it. The county executive said at his May 1st budget address that he sees step increments as a regular occurrence each year. So that sends a message to us that that's something we can look forward to. Uh, so I want to thank Ms. Rawls again and her team for remaining open and understanding to the needs of teachers in our county. We are allies in this quest to provide great public schools for every child. And I'm looking forward to traveling down the road together to make it happen. The Teachers Association sees this contract as a work of collaboration. So I urge you to vote yes for ratification for our contract. Thank you so very much. Is there any public comment on this item? All those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. Oh, is that unanimous? Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, can it be recorded as unanimous? It's a unanimous vote. <laughs> what are you going to do with all your time this summer? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that. Oh, thank That's you why both. Sit back there. Okay. Yeah, Derek. <laughs> Item 5.03 is the fourth quarter operating budget fund transfer. This is an action item. Dr. Orlato, your recommendation. Yes, ma'am. I recommend approval of the fourth quarter fund transfer for the FY 2017 operating budget that will be submitted to the county government. So moved. Second. No presentation. Uh, good checking. evening, <laughs> Alex Shackno, Chief Operating Officer. Uh, Matt Stansky, Director of Financial Operations. So we annually bring the uh, fourth quarter budget transfer uh, to the board's attention at this time of year. It allows us to do uh, accomplish two main tasks. One is to recognize revenue uh, that we've accrued through the year that were not previously anticipated, and receive the requisite appropriation authority so that we have the authority to uh, spend and dispense those funds. The second thing is because of our budgets uh, here within the state of Maryland are disaggregated uh, within 14 state categories, we have to not just balance at the bottom line, we have to balance within internally each one of those categories. So the second uh, feature of this fourth quarter transfer is to allow us to make those minor adjustments uh, late in the year to make sure we are in fact balanced among those categories. So I'll focus on the uh, first one, uh, and that is the revenue. So overall, uh, throughout the year, we've uh, aggregated about $8.5 million of additional revenue uh, that was not anticipated when the budget was struck. Um, the largest portion of that $8.5 million is the $5 million uh, ordinance or appropriation bill that the county government has introduced on our behalf. It was introduced at the county council meeting uh, just this past week and is scheduled for a public hearing and a vote uh, in uh, the 19th of June. Uh, that $5 million uh, would be permanent inside of maintenance of effort money allocated towards the fixed charges category, specifically uh, to the health care uh, fund solution. The remaining uh, $8.5 million, I'm sorry, the remaining balance uh, outside of that $5 million comes from other sources such as federal government restricted uh, state, local, and food nutrition services. 
As I said, the, uh, the remaining elements of the exhibit are really just those intercategorical uh, transfers or sort of like the technicalities to allow us to close the budget year uh, in good stead. With the board's approval, we will transmit this uh, to the county government and ask, uh, just as the county executive did uh, in concert with Mr. Hammond, we'll ask that the county introduce legislation on our behalf to recognize the additional uh, revenue, grant us the appropriation authority, and allow us the latitude to make those minor categorical adjustments so that we can close our books uh, both positively, numerically, and then balanced as well. With that, we'll entertain any questions you might have. Don't have any board questions. Is there any public comment? All those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. The next items on the agenda are policy revisions, all up for first reading. The first is number um, item 5.04, purchasing authority code DE. Good evening. For the record, Jeanette Ortiz, Legislative and Policy Council. Uh, the Purchasing Office brings Policy DE, Purchasing Authority, to you for first reading. This policy was last revised on May 18, 2005. The updated policy provides guidance on AACPS purchasing activities. The policy will be posted on our website for 30 days for public comment. I can answer any questions you may have. Okay. No board questions. Thank you. The next policy is DEA purchasing procedures. The purchasing office brings this policy to you for first reading. This policy was last revised on May 2nd, 2007. The updated policy provides guidance on the appropriate performance of the purchasing function at AACPS. The policy will be posted on our website for 30 days for public comment. I can answer any questions you may have. No questions here. Okay. Uh, the purchasing office also brings policy DEB bidding procedures to you for first reading. This policy was last revised on May 18, 2005. The updated policy provides criteria and, estab and establishes procedures on competitively procuring goods and services at AACPS. The policy will be posted on our website for 30 days for public comment. I can answer any questions you may have. Yep. Okay. The purchasing office brings policy DEC vendor relations to you for first reading. This policy was last revised on May 18, 2005. The updated policy provides guidance on appropriate relations between AACP, AACPS staff, board members, and vendor representatives. The policy will be posted on our website for 30 days for public comment. I can answer any questions you may have. I don't have a question, just a typo on page two. Okay. Um, D, procedures. Actually, under, under the regulation D. D, regulation D, E, C, all right. Okay. Letter D, the word procedures. Oh, gotcha, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Birch. I just wanted to say that it's good that you took a look at all of these because as I was looking through all of them, I noticed that the old policies and regulations were very wishy-washy about shoulds and, you know, we really hope that it works out this way, that kind of thing. So thank you for making it much more insistent that things shall be this way and things will be this way because that, it, it just, it wasn't appropriate language. It was kind of like, we hope that things work out the way we want them to work out, and that's not what you want in your purchasing language. You're welcome. Okay, the Chief Operating Office brings policy DH, <laughs> transfer or easements pertaining to board property, property to you for first reading. The policy was last revised on March 5th, 1994. The updated policy ensures that AACPS has the adequate school and support facilities available to support the school district's mission. The policy will be posted on our website for 30 days for public comment. I can answer any questions you may have. Okay, uh, the final policy is uh, the Chief Operating Office brings policy KF, joint agreements to you for first reading. The policy was last revised on December 6, 1989. 
The updated policy enables AACPS to enter into agreements for the cooperation or joint administration of programs. The policy will be posted on our website for 30 days for public comment. And I can answer any questions you may have. Okay, no thank questions you. from us. Is there any public comment in the room tonight on these? So everybody else can go online in the next 30 days. Yes, absolutely, okay. and submit any comments. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Our last item is a review item 6.01, math in the middle, intentional focus on supporting students in grades six through eight. Good evening, President Korbelak, Vice President Hummer, members of the board, and Dr. Arlotta. My name is Kathy Kubik, and I'm in the Office of School Performance, and we are very excited tonight to update you on our intentional focus on middle school mathematics. If you'll remember from the fall, we talked about the role of the principal, how it's becoming so crowded and so complex. Everything is important. And what we had decided to do was focus on one thing at every level, elementary, middle, and high school. And in elementary, we kind of threw down the gauntlet and said, what would happen if we truly decided to have all of our students reading by the end of second grade? And in middle school, we turned our attention to mathematics. And so our intentional focus for middle school is, can we get every student, each and every student, to successfully pass the Park Mathematics Assessment? But to begin that task, you really need to understand the unique needs of the middle level learner. And who best to describe the unique needs of the middle level learner than our very own Ms. Kate Gilbert, Regional Assistant Superintendent for the Chesapeake and North County Clusters. Our middle level learners are indeed unique, in part because brain growth between the ages of 10 and 15 is considered to be the greatest in human life. Adolescents are in a period of accelerated physical growth with each youngster maturing at a different rate. These children are curious and egocentric, sometimes displaying erratic and inconsistent behavior. They challenge authority figures, yet need frequent affirmation that people care. They favor active over passive learning and social over academic priorities. They want to learn only what they think is useful, yet they face decisions that can affect academic values with lifelong consequences. Middle level learners were the focus of education in the 1970s. However, it seems that middle school structures that were designed to meet the unique needs of young adolescents have been lost, changed, or marginalized in the recent era of high stakes testing. In response to Dr. Arlotto's challenge to make changes to our middle school program, we formed a work group which saw the need to return to our roots. In meeting the needs of our students, we studied the work of a variety of organizations and aligned ourselves with the Association of Middle Level Education, AMLE. We adopted the 16 tenets of AMLE's This We Believe, a platform designed to improve learners and learning in our schools. As a result of the work of the 20 plus members of the work group, we have examined and enhanced student-led conferences, collaborative planning and the use of common formative assessments, creative uses of our current schedule, the role of the interdisciplinary team leader along with the accompanying job description, the structure of interdisciplinary teams, our understanding of the middle level learner through a study of Thomas Armstrong's The Power of the Adolescent Brain, our determination to hire administrators and teachers who are committed to the middle level philosophy, and end of the year ceremonies for eighth grade students. The work group has also partnered with ASI to address learning for the advanced student and with curriculum and instruction to address the Anne Arundel County Public Schools mathematics program. Most essential to returning to our roots and supporting our middle level learner of 2017 is our collaboration with the Office of School Counseling to revamp and rekindle our advisory program. So to make these unique needs actual re a reality in our middle schools, we had to do something different in a different structure, and we needed to give these students time. So here to describe to you the middle school advisory period is Ms. Shirley Jackson Avery, our school counseling specialist. 
The middle school advisory program is uniquely designed to support the academic, social, and emotional development of students. Twice a week for 25 minutes, schools deliver advisory lessons, which help students learn and practice how to regulate emotions, set and achieve goals, establish and maintain positive relationships, as well as make responsible decisions. The advisory lessons are aligned with the CASEL research, the Collaborative for Social and Emotional Learning, which is a leading organization in SEL implementation. CASEL has identified five core competencies of social and emotional development. These competencies include self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. It is through the development of these competencies that students will be able to navigate school and the world more effectively. The Middle School Advisory Blackboard site was developed to assist schools in creating a customized advisory program to meet the needs of their students. On the Blackboard site, teachers and staff members have access to a variety of engaging social and emotional lessons and topics which support the middle school intentional focus, like growth mindset, perseverance, and problem solving are available at each grade level. Since its launch in September 2016, the Middle School Advisory Blackboard site has been visited over 24,000 times by middle school teachers and principals. The next step on our journey required significant changes, and significant changes required great leadership. Here to tell you about how we changed our practice, both the principalship and the mathematics department chair, is Mr. Skip Lee, our director of curriculum. Since we know middle school math is a persistent barrier to success and a strong predictor of success along the mathematics progression, AACPS responded in the following way. We first supported mathematic, mathematics department chairs by uh, holding bi-monthly meetings. We also focus department chair meetings on building professional learning and reviewing district's data. We continued by creating common informative assessments, by engaging in collaborative conversations around what other mathematics department chairs are doing in their respective buildings, by engaging in a book study titled Mathematical Mindset, and by developing model lessons that demonstrate exemplar teaching of the concrete representational, representational abstract instructional strategy. Each month, math department chairs join middle school principals to engage in side-by-side -side professional development, led by Ms. Howard, our coordinator of secondary mathematics. These side-by-side -side experiences strengthen common expectations for effective mathematics instruction. All middle school math mathematics teachers also receive consistent professional development on effectively teaching the CRA instructional strategy and were joined by their special education colleagues in a collaborative coaching setting. These efforts have come a long way in building skills and knowledge throughout our system. So why is this intentional focus so difficult? How is it so hard to get every student to pass the park mathematics? We had to again look at this question. How does poverty really affect the achievement of students in middle school? And if you look at this graph, similar to the one we showed in reading, but this one for a park in grade six, each school, each one of our middle schools is represented by a blue dot. And once again, as the x-axis goes to the right and poverty increases, the y-axis going up and down, achievement decreases. But if you think about it, Anne Arundel County Public Schools is not alone in this dilemma. No one yet has cracked this nut. When we look at the success of, in, of students in all of the LEAs, in elementary school, it's a very value-added education. Year after year, more and more students become successful in math until they hit sixth grade. And then in sixth grade, in all 24 LEAs, from sixth to seventh to eighth, you see the decrease in mathematics performance of students in each grade. That means we needed a different strategy, a different instructional strategy that would work for all students. And here to tell you about that strategy is Ms. Nicole Howard, our own coordinator of secondary mathematics. Good evening. In the math office, we have focused this year on rewriting the sixth grade curriculum by designing lessons that pr promote true mathematical understanding. 
Here's an example of what a sixth grader needs to understand. Why are all of the above ratios equivalent? Can I apply my understanding to new situations by creating more equivalent ratios? We accomplish this mathematical understanding by using an instructional approach called CRA, Concrete Representational Abstract. CRA is a three-part instructional strategy with each part building on the previous part to promote student learning and retention. Concrete, the doing stage, uses concrete objects to model problems. The representational is a seeing stage where we use representations of the objects to model problems. Then we move into the abstract stage, which is the symbolic stage where we use abstract symbols to model mathematical problems. Teachers using the CRA instructional strategy provide all students the ability to access mathematics. Math should make sense to everyone, whether you are poor, have an IEP, gifted, or on grade level. With this instructional strategy, we start with a real world problem. In this scenario, Kevin needs more orange paint. Orange paint consists of both yellow and red paint. How can Kevin ensure that when he mixes up a new batch of paint, that the batch will be the same color as the first orange paint created? The snap cubes in front of you are a concrete model. So I'd like you to grab your snap cubes for me, please. Of paint cans, where you have two red paint cans and three yellow paint cans. And when you snap them together, you actually are mixing the paint to create an orange batch of paint. Now I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to snap your cubes to your neighbor's cubes. So turn to your neighbor and you're going to take your cubes and snap them to your neighbor's cubes. And you're going to see from your model, your concrete model, that you now have a new batch of paint. In order to make a new batch of paint that had more paint than the first batch, we have to double our paint. You see we now have four cans of red paint, four red blocks, and six cans of yellow paint, six yellow blocks. Going back to what our sixth graders need to understand, we can see with your models that a ratio of two red cans to three yellow cans yields the same color orange paint as a ratio of four cans to six cans. We have the same color. Just one batch has a larger quantity of paint. As our students progress through the stages of learning mathematics to be able to explain why things work, we transition through the CRA instructional strategy. In the end, we want all students to be successful when solving math problems that look like 2 to 3 is equivalent to what number over 12. Using this strategy has yielded great success in Anne Arundel County Public Schools in the sixth grade. Sixth grade teachers are more confident in their ability to teach using CRA and almost all of our middle schools in the sixth grade have increased their quarterly assessments over the course of the school year. So you hear it a lot from central office and what this looks like. Now let's look at the success of a specific school. And I'm proud to introduce, introduce Ms. Beth Shaken, the principal at Brooklyn Park Middle School, and Mike Lombino, the mathematics department chair. Dr. Rilato has set clear expectations for middle school principals with the math intentional focus. Recognizing the power of simplicity and that we do our best work when the scope and focus of that work are crystal clear. How the success of the intentional focus is accomplished has been left up to principals and their school-based teams. Each middle school has tackled this initiative in its own way, and I'm here to share Brooklyn Park Middle School's plan. We looked at three of the structures that drive a school's success. The school improvement plan, the master schedule, and collaborative planning, and ensured that each of those supported the intentional focus. Within our school improvement plan, the CRA model was included as an instructional strategy under our student-centered action step. Additionally, we created an intentional focus charter team that met twice monthly this year to support our grade level teams. Secondly, we built the master schedule and staffing assignments around the intentional focus so we could reduce on grade level math class sizes across all grades. Third, collaborative planning, we increased from two to three times a week, and we set specific expectations for that meeting cycle, and additionally, engaged in peer-to-peer visits and collaboration around what we learned. We also reached out to the community 
and invited parents to math night to help them understand the CRA instructional strategy. And as parent-teacher conference days approached this year, grade-level teams personally reached out to parents of students who were struggling in math to invite them into conferences in an effort to improve achievement. We can't get our students to where we want them to be without our teachers getting there first. The major focus of my work this year has been building teacher knowledge and skills around mathematics instruction. An emphasis of the mathematics office this year for department chairs has been coaching. We have received extensive training on coaching techniques in order to grow our teachers on an individual basis to be more successful in the classroom. Also this year, we have sharpened our use of collaborative planning, planning purposeful lessons using sound instructional strategies, providing an avenue for professional development, and analyzing student data are all at the core of collaborative planning. When studying a model lesson or the use of CRA in collaborative planning, we become the students. We work through the lessons together step by step to identify where our students may get hung up with the process and also where we as teachers are going to struggle. And at times, we have struggled. The productive struggle we go through is an important aspect in building our knowledge base of mathematics instruction. As a result of these structures, the tireless work of students, the dedication of our math teachers, and the unwavering leadership of Mike Labino, our math department chair, and Doug Schreiber, our assistant principal over the math department, we are so proud of the gains we made this year compared to last. Rather than limiting our capacities, the intentional focus is allowing us to be more imaginative, proficient, and productive at what we do. So now we want to show you the Anne Arundel County Public Schools results this year. In almost every middle school in grade six, when you look from the green to the blue, you see increases in student achievement, more students understanding mathematics. And that actually falls out in almost every course across the county. Math six, first to third. Math six, seven. Math seven. Math seven, eight. Math eight. And even algebra one, where we did really well last year, they still saw an increase. So we wanted, to hear, wanted you to hear from us tonight, but of course, we wanted to end with you hearing from our very own students. Math has changed for me in sixth grade because I feel that concepts are explained more thoroughly, like they go deeper into concepts. Rather than saying multiplication, it's multiplication, you can multiply it this way, this way, you can model it this way. Math changed for me this year in sixth grade because usually math is hard, but, but now I got hands-on with supplies and different stuff with notes that help me. Usually I'd get low Bs or Cs, but then as the, years go, at the year, as year went on, I, underst I understood it more and now I have a A in, in math. I think it could help later in life for my, um, my future job. I wanna be like a chemist, so ratios, multiplication, math is very important for that. Thank you, and at this time, we'll answer any questions. Mr. Gilliland. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you, everyone. I, I think this is a great presentation, um, and, and it's awesome. I've seen this done in other environments where, um, quite honestly, cost uh, for MOI and, and you know just to conduct this is not a factor. And when cost does become a factor, I know there's some limitations, so uh, I'm glad we're doing it. Um, this stuff works. Um, we know that. Um, my, my questions specifically about Brooklyn Park Middle and the parental involvement, um, and I, I guess it's just a broader question. What was the parental response, and you know, were there, um, you know, I guess highlights that you could share, um, or, or even um, tips or best practices that we could model elsewhere to engage uh, parental involvement or increase parental involvement? I would say the tips were we had a higher rate of return, um, the fact that we personally reached out to our families. Um, you know, I can't honestly say that I followed then the success of the students that we had in with, with parents, but um, the fact that we personally reached out, I think made a huge difference instead of just the blanket connect ed call or the newsletter going home that we, we targeted specific families. And I would just say, I was talking about your school last night at a, a different meeting, and I think what you're doing there is awesome, so, so thank you for that. One, one last question, though, and, and you know, Dr. Kubik you know, 
certainly knows um, more about this than I do, but is Brooklyn Park Middle a, um, a parent U participating school? Yes, yes, parent university? Yes. We do. Mm -hmm. We just started it this year. Excellent. Thank you. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Birch. I uh, want to thank Mr. Labino for being such an amazing teacher. He uh, helped my son get through algebra last year, so um, he definitely knows his stuff and he is amazing. Um, he's doing well in geometry this year, so just wanted you, <laughs> wanted you to know that. Um, but outstanding and just couldn't thank you enough for you know, differentiating, recognizing what he needed, being the teacher that you needed to be for him. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Mrs. Hummer. I want to give a shout out to um, Student Advisory Rally at um, Brooklyn Park, and I'm sure at other schools as well. My daughter loves Rally. She talks about it all the time. In fact, she was running for a position in Crask, and one of her points was student rally that we need to have it everywhere because it's so beneficial and getting to know other kids. So it's made it, it's a very positive thing for our middle schoolers. So thank you all for coordinating that. Dr. Arlotto. Thank you. Fabulous presentation. Um, this is really the power of the collaboration. Um, it, were, it, was, uh, it began with conversations with the exec team. Um, uh, last summer about the things that we need to do for our students. Um, math at the middle school level was, was just that for us in one of our intentional focus. It was OSP that really wrapped their arms around it. Thank you, Dr. Kubik, to say how do we make this vision become a reality. Um, but this is a prime example of nothing's going to move in this school system for our children unless we're doing it collectively. And it's at the school level, it's at the schoolhouse level, it's in the classroom, it's at the leadership level, it's got to involve curriculum. And you can't do anything with, mil with middle schoolers if you're not talking about the mind and body. Um, and so surely you and your team have done a fabulous job. This is a, the coordination, the coordination and leadership came um, not only from Dr. Kubik, but, but really from Kate Gilbert, um, whose heart and passion and love is in the middle school. Um, we questioned her about that many times <laughs> over the years, but she has had a long, long career um, of, of her love and support of middle school students. And so I thank you for your work. And, and in all of our endeavors and everything and all of our intentional focus, none of it's done in a single department. It's done collaboratively. And it's this team that does the work, and I thank you for it. Wonderful. Thank you. I just want to add thank you for bringing math to life for our middle schoolers. <laughs> thank you for your presentation. That concludes this portion of our meeting. I just have a couple of announcements. The next board policy committee meeting is Wednesday, May 31st at 1 p.m. The next board of education meeting is Wednesday, June 7th at 10 a.m. We have an upcoming board budget committee meeting on Wednesday, June 21st um, after the conclusion of the board meeting. Uh, I just want to remind everybody, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting tonight, that we have, a, we have to conduct a private hearing this evening, so we're going to have to ask everyone to leave. Um, momentarily, and then Mrs. Hummer. Mm -hmm. For legal, we have to go to closed session. We do. Mm -hmm. For legal. Oh. We just need to close for legal. <coughs> okay, I move we go to. If we go to closed session, which one am I doing? Discuss to discuss a legal matter. Yeah. Do I have a motion? I so move. We yeah, don't we need do. to close to go to it? We have something to finish. Oh, we do. Yeah, we do. Yes. Sorry. Sorry for the confusion, people. Yes, we need to. Uh, I move that we close to go into to go into closed session, discuss legal matter. Second. All those in favor? All right, we're back in closed session. Thank you.
and thank you for coming and i think it's been so important of our